Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and uh, I am orbiting above Gilly at 10 meters per second in my most fantastic interplanetary craft. Yes, we have Archibald and Thombert here. What we have is a dumbbell-like device with 50% fuel in the tank at each end, and I'm actually going to show you some interesting things about the way uh, resource transfer works and how they interact with physics and uh, how that can be exploited for fun and profit. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you can imagine this thing is balanced. The center of mass is right in the middle. So if I get this guy out to EVA and I let him go, right, he is going to serve as a reference point. If I now switch back to the spacecraft and try to make it rotate by holding the A button. This will take, it takes a little while to get up to speed, but I should probably use the time acceleration, that might help. There we go. We can watch that he is just more or less floating in the same location, whereas the spacecraft rotates around him. Oh wait, no, it's now rotating on some sort of weird axis. But the point is, he is actually near the center of rotation. Now, if I arrest the rotation here just by time accelerating, that will save us a moment, we can take a look at the balance of this. Now, how do we change the balance, the center of mass? Well, of course, we can transfer fuel from one end to the other. Now, let us do that. Now notice the camera is moving as the center of mass is moving. However, notice that my astronaut is also moving with the spacecraft. Therefore, the center of mass isn't actually moving in this universe. <laughs> and this is a discrepancy which can be uh, exploited in interesting ways. So the, for now, if I try to rotate this spacecraft, and I'm not sure the best way to do that, let's... Let's rotate it so that he's not going to get caught up in it again. And start rotating. And again, hit the accelerate button. So because this one has all the mass, he now sits there, carried away. So if we rotate this through uh, 180 degrees, and this will take a moment. And I'm just going to cheat. I'm just going to use time acceleration to freeze the rotation when it gets there because... I only have so much time, and I know we all can't be bothered waiting for everything in the real universe to work. There we go. Uh, time. Okay. So now he has moved. So we can now recarry this step a little further. We can take the fuel from this end and transfer it into this. And let us do that. It takes the button moment. Again, you see the camera moving, illustrating the center of mass is moving. But nothing else moves, right? It's just the distribution of mass that is being moved. The fuel has no inertia when it is moving around. And this is, of course, not like reality. In reality, spacecraft have to deal with the fuel itself having inertia and, and one example of this is fuel slosh in fuel tanks and this was uh, for example in the, the lunar lander it was very important that they controlled the fuel sloshing around in the tanks because that could very quickly make the spacecraft unbalanced or introduce an oscillation which would be would make it very hard to land so they put baffles in fuel tanks to prevent this from happening uh, similarly if you have an example like the the Falcon, right, where you have fuel feeding in from external tanks, because you have the moment of inertia changing, that would mean that the, if there's any rotation, it will get amplified as the fuel is brought into the middle of the tank, sim, uh, in the central tank, similar to the effect of an ice skater, you know, with their arm spinning with their arms out and then pulling their arms in. So look, you see that I've managed to violate the laws of physics and without any actual transfer of, of inertia or fuel or anything, I've managed to move this thing, uh, you know, 40 meters just using my uh, fuel transfer. So we're just going to fly him back because we don't want to leave him behind. So you can, of course, exploit this to move the spacecraft up and down in orbits and you could move him from a high energy orbit into a slightly a lower energy orbit, but maintain your velocity, thereby actually getting 
picking up energy in the process. Or you could do the reverse. You can bleed off energy just by transferring into a higher energy or uh, into a lower orbit and then find yourself moving more slowly. It, it's all, you know, you using gravity, you can exploit this to get more speed. But beyond this, I found that it's actually possible to just pick up velocity by turning at the right speed. Now, let's let's turn the camera again. We're going to set up a relatively fast rotation here. That's the plan. It just is going to take a few seconds once again. Hit the time accelerate. And again, you see how it's rotating in this axis. And I'm not sure how fast we want it to go because I'm going to have to babysit this. So what I'm going to do now that this seem, seems to be transferring, uh, trans, r rotating, so I'm going to transfer fuel between these two blocks in a pattern that encourages, uh, that will encourage the velocity to increase. So let's do out, out, and watch as everything transfers around, and then as this piece comes to the other side, we're now going to do the same. We're going to transfer the fuel out, out, and watch my orbital velocity underneath. See that I'm gaining about one meter per second per revolution. And, you know, orbiting Gilly, that is actually quite a lot because at this altitude, the orbital velocity is, is about 10 meters per second. So I'm already hitting something like escape velocity just by pumping fuel in a rotating ship. <laughs> Breaking all sorts of laws of physics here. And, uh, you know, that's that's fun. What, what this isn't quite as simple as the, the transfer of the center of mass that allowed us to move. This is uh, an effect that is more related to a consistent error in the physics system, and we're forcing an error that always works in our favor, rather like the stories of the people that uh, rewrite accounting systems so that the half-cent error always ends up getting credited to their accounts and thereby stealing millions of, of dollars half a penny at a time. True story, it isn't just something that happened in Superman 3 or uh, Office Space. It did actually happen. In fact, the guy would have got away with it if he hadn't been such a show-off. Um, so yeah, I'm doing the same thing in the physics system. I basically build it, but I'm building up an error. Oh shoot, I think I missed, I missed one there. Talking too much. Let me go. Out, out. You've got to keep them going the same way. So, not only am I gaining velocity that is is within the orbit, I'm actually gaining velocity beyond the escape velocity. Some people, uh, well, if you looked at this naively, you, just by adjusting your height, you might not think you would be able to get more than your escape velocity. Now, you can, of course, change the, the order in which you're doing things. I'm, I was doing the out at the top. Let's start doing in at the top now, and we'll see that our velocity will start going down using the same rotation. This is kind of harder because it's moving faster. There we go, and then try to get the in, in, in. Oh, darn, I'm missing that one. Oh, this is a little harder to do. Maybe I should do the out. Oh, no, stop. Ah, let, let's get this started again. I'll do, I'll transfer out at the bottom of the rotation. There. <laughs> I'm still very fluey, as you can hear, but uh, I'm getting a lot better. There we go. So now as it comes around the bottom, out, out, there we go, out, out, and you see my orbital velocity is dropping very quickly, uh, and I've somehow managed to balance out my fuel again. Ah, this is no simple task navigating a device that violates the laws of physics, huh? Now, I don't expect Kerbal Space Program developers to go and deal with this particular problem. It Seriously, it is a minor effect. Uh, sure, you know, mass transfer between tanks could be modelled in interesting ways, especially those people that are fond of building ring after ring of asparagus stage rockets. You know, the fuel transfer in that should actually induce serious rotations that could destroy spacecraft if you... Uh, implemented it correctly. It might be something to consider, you know, having extra stability to counteract this natural motion. Um, but uh, it, it is a minor effect, and you see that I have to build a very bizarre spacecraft to 
really exploit this and even then it would take a very long time to actually use this for good and let's face it if you have that much fuel you're not exactly using this as a secret way to get home crap i missed it again ah i guess i'm gonna have to oh i picked up some velocity i'm trying to lower my orbital velocity not raise it darn it wait for this to come back around one more time out 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 my ability with the mouse is not great. This is being hurt by my lack. Oh, crap. There we go again. Uh, uh, oh. Ah! Well, okay, you get the idea, guys. <laughs> yes, laws of physics being violated in Kerbal Space Program. Who'd have thought it, huh? I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.